Everybody, praise the Lord. Everybody's ready for Thanksgiving? Nobody's ready for Thanksgiving. Right? We're ready to eat, but we just haven't got it all together, right? <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, uh, testimonies. Anybody have a testimony or prayer request? Got prayer request. Yeah. Um, so, a couple things. One, my friend at work that had a chance. Oh, uh, testimony also. Um, neighbor across the street has diabetes, and his diabetes has been really flaring up, and I think he's Catholic. Um, and he actually gave me the opportunity to pray with him in the front yard. He doesn't believe he'll be healed, but you know, I'm, I'm praying, I'm believing he's healed, and I'm, I'm believing for his healing because he's, his diabetes is just really out of control, and it's, it's not a good situation at all for him. A uh, friend of mine at work that I've had the opportunity to witness to and pray for, I told her we pray for her mom tonight. Her mom's going through her last round of chemo, you know, believing she's healed. Um, and lastly, our friends, hopefully they're not watching tonight, the David and Gala that have come here to church, she, they went down to Arizona, she decided she needed to come back to Iowa for some reason, and basically left him and came back to Iowa, but it's, you know, there, she hasn't left him for good, but just some crazy stuff going on. Yeah. Um, when you prayed with her, all the voices in her head stopped and, and everything, everything was great. She, she testified, I didn't need to know this. But through him, we found out that, you know, she's, she's constantly being bombarded with spiritual things going on. And all of that stopped, and she's at peace, and unfortunately, she's allowed those things to come back. Yeah. It's like anything else, like healing, you know, long-term things like that can be very disturbing. You know, you just have to keep confessing what the Word of God says. But, you know, your body's telling you something else in this situation mm -hmm. where the, the enemy attacks the mind. And, so you know, these days, <clears throat> the marriage marriage is one of the first thing the enemy goes for. He can divide the family, you yeah. know. Then he'll he's, he's you know wherever there is strife, there's all this other junk that comes into the situation. And all of us experience it. I mean, Sally and I. I mean, if, you know, if you're married, you're going to have issues. That's one of the big struggles is to try to work through it. You know, sadly for me, I've been through the marriage and divorce stuff and. Uh, you know, you just carry that baggage on. I mean, a lot of times it just it just affects the next relationship and so on and so forth. So, that generally, uh, I'd say most often is not, unless there's real abuse or something, that's really not the way you want to go. Because yep. there's yeah. stuff that God wants to heal. Yeah. You know, but we have to be willing to, to allow that to happen. But that's what the enemy does. He He's a liar. And anything he can do to convince us of the moment, I mean, I've seen it happen to myself and others as well. Prayer, and you get, mm -hmm. you know, breakthrough, you get healed, you get this or the other thing. And so you think, okay, well, that's all over with. Now I don't have to deal with it. But then symptoms come and other things. And this it's the, the, the scripture says that the enemy comes to steal the word. Yeah. So the minute you can just bank on it, the moment you get a word from God and you start to act on it, the enemy's going to come and try to take that away from you, to try to deny it, to try to give you some physical thing that's going to show you that that can't be right, you know, that can't be happening, so it's not unusual, but sadly, when people are not living, led by the Spirit, yeah. it's easy to be, you know, kind of confused by the other spirits that are there, and by our own minds, right. yeah. so, you know, yeah. Well, so so prayers especially for David because he's now out there in Arizona by himself. You know, she flew back here yesterday, and you know he's got a. I don't know how who's going to spend Thanksgiving with her. Yeah. Well, we're just going to pray for reconciliation and the restoration of that relationship and the yeah. authority over it. And that's what we're here for. Praise the Lord. Yes, Mike. Uh, continue to pray for Cindy healing in her, in her foot, the second degree thing. It's, the healing's coming, but there's still a lot of pain there. Um, I'm, I'm discerning that it's the nerves growing back and they're regenerating. That's where she's getting a lot of pain. But right. pray for uh, and stand with her for a complete healing, uh, that situation. Um, I also ran into the situation at work and I talked to uh, Michael about it. Um, I had a real situation with a customer at work that no matter what I said, it was I was talking to my mom, it was 
it was a real nasty situation. I gave him quoted prices and stuff, and he agreed to it. And then afterwards, he said, "Well, why is it so much?" It just it was not of the Lord. So let's put right. it that with the bottom line. Well, anyway, I got to work Monday, and uh, after listening to some of the things being spoke here over the weekend and stuff. He hadn't picked up the stuff until Monday morning, and I was just declaring over that stuff. I says, I'm rebuking that. I'm rebuking the spirit. Off. He walked in. It's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Wrote his check. He was on his way, explained him a few things, and sent him on his way. So um, just taking authority over situations. Yeah, and, sure. and that was just a minuscule situation that we're working with. And then uh, uh, another situation, some of our youth are getting discouraged. Um, I know the Lord is working on our hearts and He has a plan in their lives and, and they're getting discouraged because their friends and stuff aren't seen quite the same way and, and uh, uh, some, of them, some of them they brought, they said they're not coming back, uh, uh, that have been here uh, just once or twice and, and uh, just, just for, keep, encourage, encourage the youth to keep pursuing the things of the Lord. Amen. 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 We just stand with you and with them yeah. again. People who are not, you know, that don't have a spiritual kind of condition in their life, their relationship with the Lord, that everything that they, they base everything on the external. So unless you have, you know, the big building and the fancy stuff and all of the, you know, entertainment, yeah. quote unquote, uh, they're really not that interested. So, I mean, I understand why we do that and why we've done it in the past and we've done it here. We've given away the bicycles and done all that kind of thing. But um, sadly, usually that only holds them as long as you're doing it too. Exactly. So, you know, unless the Spirit draws them, that's why this is important. Because we pray for that. We pray for God's Spirit to be influencing people, whether it's yes. the youth or, or adults or whoever it might be. That God will draw them because we all know. You know, you can witness, you can testify, you can love, and people still will reject and do all sorts of things simply because. Unless the spirit draws them, they can't come to. That's right. They come to religion. They can come to maybe a you know a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist or whatever. But uh, they need they need the spirit to draw. Mm -hmm. Another thing I was going to and I was going to mention when you were talking, Mike. I was in sales for years and years. Not that Tim can have testified. It's all of us probably can. But when you're in the public, working with the public, people, you know, you, you, you it's it's easy to to want to kind of measure somebody by an experience. Mm -hmm. And so many times it's just, you don't know what was going on before they got there. You know I mean? Right. You don't know, did the wife and them just have an argument? Did right. they get just bad news? Somebody's, you know, dying or somebody's sick or, mm -hmm. or some other things going on in their employment right. and they're depressed and bummed out. They want to vent, you know, they yeah. want to project on somebody yeah. and look, you're the guy. You yeah. can't do anything because you're the salesman, right? You're the, you've got to keep the customer happy. Right. So they kind of know that, and mm -hmm. they take advantage of it by kind of ranting yeah. on you and, and knowing that you're not going to retaliate, so they can kind of just vent and say and do whatever they want to do and get away with it. Yeah. And then the next day they realize, you know, geez, I was being a jerk. And Oops. Let's just put this behind us. You know? Yeah. But that's what, I mean, that's why it's, it's so important to, you know, the scripture talks about, uh, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Right. Because, I mean, most of us, you know, when somebody confronts you and acts ugly to you, our, our natural instinct is to retaliate. Right. You know, is to say, I don't know what your problem is, clown, but, you know, I don't really want to deal with this. You know, you're being a jerk. And yeah. so, and we lose our opportunity, you know, then to have any kind of influence on later. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people think, well, that's, that's being passive, that's being cowardly. No, it's just being wise. It's just using right. some wisdom, you know, because right. sometimes uh, when in the fight, you lose the war. You know what yeah. I mean? You might win over that one moment, and then you end up losing what might have been down the road. So, yeah. yeah, good word, though, because that's, we all deal with it. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, also, another testimony. Um, as you know, I was still with diabetes last year, and the hair is starting to grow back on my legs. Right. Uh, my sores are dealing up, so. But, but I do need prayer for some uh, blood circulation issues that I have. You know what I've learned at my age? Uh, the hair is not growing back in my ankles. It's been like a transplant. Now it's growing out of my ears and my mm, nose. Yeah. So, 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 I still got it all. It's just not in the same place. Looks like an extension of the mustache, I've noticed. Yeah, it's, well, it's still there, but it's just, 
Australian government. Zoo. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. Yes, uh, I actually pray uh, for the young folks. You know, we, we have so many shootings, and, and then uh, even down home and up here, uh, down in Missouri. Uh, and, and, I, and I think, you know, one of the biggest things is really uh, having home training. You know, that they, they have uh, good leadership and, and people that, you know, guys, that, especially with the, the world to stand up. You know, I was I was fortunate in church to have uh, we had a junior layman program and uh, to teach to be lay ministers in the church and that group of uh, older men that gave us the time, you know, and took us to things. I you know I can feel their influences to today. So we really need to pray for them. And also I ask you to pray for the both of the kids' mom, um, the boys' mom. Um, she's been sick and and the, the thing about her when we had prayed for earlier this year when they almost lost her. You know, when she gets sick, it's not just that, uh, just like we think about just a cold or something like that, you know, because they want to do a surgery on her neck and they haven't done that yet. And uh, But, you know, I just pray for her that this time, because sometimes, you know, she still has a lot of questions uh, uh, in, in relationship with God about why she got, you know, got left behind and and she was so close to not just in a short time she could have been gone. And I, I think she just got still some things in there we'd like to pray for her. And also just I want to thank the Lord for how many blessings that he's given us. And it's just if you, if you just count the blessings in just the, the last twenty four hours that he gives you. Yeah. You know, and, and I just always thought we should count the blessings more than we do our problems, you know. We we, we tend to dwell on what we don't have. You know, that, that's always like the Garden of Eden. It, it, it was always kind of bothersome to me. They had use of the whole garden, except just, you know, the, the one. The yeah, one. Exactly. Yeah, and, and they had use of the whole But that's what they focused in on, what they didn't have. And that's what Satan, well, you know, you know, if you touch this, you could do this, you know. You'd be like God and, and realize that, hey, I, I meet with God every day. Yeah. I, I have a relationship with God every day. That's more important than me doing this. But, you know, when you hear those whispers and, you know, and that, and that just causes things to twist around mm-hmm. and they end up losing their their first, you know, place they was at. And I just thought, uh, you know, it's not worth it. You know, the only thing that's worth it is serving God Amen. with 100% of your heart. That's what's worth it. Amen. My second, you know, Black Friday. Only in America do we trample one another for a sale. Exactly one day after we spent the day giving thanks for what we already have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, really. Yeah. And that's really, that's what you're saying, you know, in a lot of ways, it's the same thing. We, you know, we focus on what we don't have instead of what we do have. And really, with God, the only way you get the other thing is by being grateful for what he's, for what he's already done. You know, I think... <coughs> I think you mentioned it Sunday uh, when you were testifying about setting up the uh, the, the stones, you know, in the, in the when they crossed the Jordan as a reminder of what God had done, you know. And, and, and every time that something like that would happen, Jacob with the rock, you know, that he used as a pillow, and he said, "Surely this is the house of God." And they, whenever they had an encounter with God, whenever God blessed them, they left a marker there, not just for themselves, but for the next generation, for those generations that would come as a constant reminder of God's faithfulness to us and what God is doing for us and, and the blessings that we have. And almost all of us have some something in our lives that we that we want breakthrough in. You know, whether it's a healing, whether it's a financial situation, whatever it might be. But if we make that the focus, then we're just down and depressed and bummed out instead of recognizing all of the good things that are going on in our lives. See, all the, I mean, every day when we wake up is a blessing. I mean, He holds us all, you know, so all you have to do is blink, basically, and we wouldn't be here anymore. So everything that we have is, uh, is actually a testimony to God for His faithfulness and His goodness to us. So, yeah, yeah we, need to, we need to be thankful every day of the year, not just on Thanksgiving. I mean, that's my, I love Thanksgiving because it's time for family and everything like that, but at the same time, it ought to be the kind of uh, kind of the uh, benchmark for how we live our lives the other 364 days. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Anybody else? All right, let's stand then and go to the Lord for these needs. Praise God. God already knew him. Yes. Yes. He knows exactly how to deal with each one of these situations. <coughs> That's what we're asking, Lord. You, you have the perfect understanding of each one of these individuals and their problems, their situations, their circumstances, their mental state, their spiritual state. And Lord, we know that more than we do, far more than we do, you want to be a blessing to them. You want to be real to them. You want to heal. You want to deliver. You want to prosper. You want to give them breakthrough. You want them to know you. And so, Father, we just release our faith right now for your perfect will to be done, for your love to be manifest in their lives, for your healing, for your deliverance. You are the God of the right now. So whatever their need is right now, Lord, we know that you can meet that need. If it's a healing, you're their healer right now, Lord. If it's prosperity, you are their provider right now, Lord. If it's, if it's a spiritual condition and fears, Lord, you are their God, their creator, hallelujah, their heavenly Father. And so, Lord, we ask you, in the name of Jesus, to meet every one of these needs for your glory, Lord, and for your children's sake, that they might know you as their loving Father, as their God, amen, as their Creator. Help them, Lord, to humble themselves before you and be thankful, Lord, for all that you do and all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. And, Lord, we're going to be faithful, Lord, to praise you and to give glory and honor and thanks to you. Amen. I believe, Lord, testimonies will come as a result of these prayers right now, Lord, because you want us to know how faithful you are, how much you care. And so, Lord, we just release our faith and we give you thanks right now. Yes, Lord. In advance from our position. Amen. For you, it's hindsight. But for us, we're saying in advance, thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. For healing, for delivering, for giving insight, for giving peace and understanding and revelation. Hallelujah. For making yourself real in these situations. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Praise Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank, Lord. Praise Thank Lord. the Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. What do we do now? Praise the Lord. Okay. Announcements. Announcements. Now, well, I wish all of you a very happy Thanksgiving and uh, I got a good day of peace and just enjoyment and relaxation and just. Just make it a good day. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. And believe that God will just be in the midst of all of it. Amen. Time to praise the Lord. Offering. Offering. Peter, would you mind? Sure. I give my offering. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity to give to you, Lord. Yes. Because you were the one who first gave to us, Father, in Jesus' yes. name. Father, we give back to you what belongs to you, and we give, Lord, that your kingdom might advance across this earth. In Jesus' name, amen.
That just doesn't get it. Praise God. Amen. But I do appreciate your prayer requests this evening and, uh, and your testimonies. And I, I really do. I'm just going to talk about that very thing uh, and how we need to live our lives in that respect in, uh, in terms of being in agreement with the Word of God and uh, expecting, having expectation for what God wants to do <clears throat> and is doing in our lives. Praise the Lord. So with that in mind... I'll give Mike a chance to get back to the, <coughs> excuse me, back to the computer there. But, hey man, I think, uh, I think my wife is going to go with, I, I know she's going somewhere with my daughter, I don't know, on Friday. So pray for them, praise the Lord, and pray for me. They, there's still some money for the checkbook, praise God. But, uh, amen. Pray for me because I'm watching three grandkids. Ages, ages seven to, down to four. Amen. So, <clears throat> I may need some intervention. Praise God. Thank the Lord. It's supposed to be 60 degrees. So I can run them outside and get out the wiffle balls and just <laughs> make them make them work. Praise the Lord. I'll wear them out if nothing else. As I know they'll wear me out, but thank the Lord. God is good, and amen. I appreciate family, and, and again, I hope you all just, uh, whoever you're with, how big the family is, or the, the get-together, just enjoy it, and amen. just remember the Lord is right in the middle of it. Praise amen. God. Okay, let's, let's go to Mark chapter 11, and I want to read verses just 22 and 23. Mark 11, uh, 22 and 23. We're having a bunch of the kids over and their spouses, so we'll have a house full. And... Good thing about it is I don't have to do a thing except eat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I can do that. So Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. They praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, saying that or repeating the scripture is one thing, but acting on it is quite another. Right. Amen. It's not hard to believe that Jesus spoke to a mountain or spoke to fig trees or spoke to any situation or circumstance, and they did what he said. Amen. But it's a little harder to believe that we can do the same when we're confronted with it, when we're dealing with those negative situations. But the Bible says that as believers, amen, we have authority to speak 
by faith the word of God and expect that God will back our words with his power. Amen? That's what the scripture tells us. Look at four, uh, Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now this is talking about Abraham. Now what did Abraham do? He agreed with what God said. That he would have this child. And that he would be the father of many nations. Amen. And so forth. So as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Amen. So that's just like Abraham. Now look at John chapter 14 and verse 13. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever we ask in His name, in Jesus' name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. You say, well, yeah, Nathan, that's, that's great, but that's just a prayer verse. That's not really speaking to mountains. But you have to understand that the Greek word here that we translate into English as ask the original, the literal meaning is demand. Now remember, in the Old Testament, God gave a, a, a word to, to a prophet and he said, command ye me. Now that sounds almost heretical to us, but that's what God is saying. Command ye me. How do you do that? By the word of God, by using his word. He is obligated, he is bound to keep that word. Praise the Lord. So it isn't we just say anything, but if we say it in agreement with this word, by definition, God's, God is, is demanded to do it of himself. He can't be unfaithful to his own word. He and the word are one. Right. Amen. So it's speaking to the kind of command that Jesus gave to the fig tree. It's the kind of thing that, that Peter did. Look at, look at Acts chapter 3, uh, verses 6 to, uh, through 8. Acts 3, 6 through 8. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Remember this when he, the, the blind man was healed? Or the lame man was healed? As I give, I give thee, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle and bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Yeah, through 12, I'm sorry. Or through 12 through 16. Okay. No, 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 I'm sorry, Mike. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So, this is what Peter said. He says it has nothing to do with me humanly, naturally. It has nothing to do with my holiness. It has anything to do with my natural powers or ability, right? All right, now go to Acts 3, 12 through 16. Just opt out 12 through 16. So when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. He saw them all going, look what they've done. Look what this guy did. Look what this, this guy, he prayed and this guy's healed. And so Peter saw it and he answered to the people. You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One, and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And you killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Praise the Lord. So if you've got faith, amen, in Jesus' name, you can expect the same results Amen. When you speak the words of faith. This is not, it isn't for special people. Other than we are special in, in, in the sense that we are children of God. But it isn't for certain people in the church or believers. It's, it's for whoever believes. If you believe and speak in faith in the name of Jesus, you'll get the same results. You speak the word in faith. Because those faith words release God's power and they produce supernatural results. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. I would, I would encourage you, if you don't already, you should write down. I mean, if, if you have specific situations and needs. Now, there are things that come up unexpected that we have to deal with, and you use the Word of God to, to speak to that. But if you have ongoing situations like most of us have, you should write out some scriptures. And we, you know, we, we, the way we used to confess them, those were generic, but you can, you can find scriptures that speak specifically to your need, whether it's a physical need, a healing, whether it's a financial need. There's plenty of scripture here for all of that. And I would encourage you to do that and confess them every day. Amen? And whenever the enemy comes and brings fear or doubt about it, start saying it. Start speaking it. Because the devil knows your voice. He knows you have authority. We just don't exercise it. Amen. And so we need to be saying these things. Amen. And also, not only does it, does it change the, uh, the approach of the enemy to you, it also changes your way of thinking. Yeah, have you ever been, you've been depressed, ever been bummed out and just, you know, kind of, I, I tell you, for years, I would just go to the book of Psalms and just start reading. There you go. And it would literally change my whole attitude. Amen. It would change my countenance. Everything about me, I just feel lighter. I feel better. Now, nothing had changed in the natural. But I'm thinking in agreement with my spirit. Amen. And all of a sudden, things kind of calm down and you feel like you're in tune with what God's trying to do. Well, that has the same effect when you confess the word. Amen. Not just reading it. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying if you write out your confession and then confess that thing, whenever the fear comes, whenever the doubt comes, whenever the symptoms come, whenever the phone call, whatever, and you begin to speak that, you'll feel physically empowered. You'll feel physically better, amen, because your, your, your natural man begins to align with who you are in the spirit, amen. The reason that Jesus is backing our words is that he, he oversees the demands of faith that you make in His name. That's what Jesus does. Amen. When we speak His words, He oversees those words. He sees to it that those words come to pass. Amen. Look at, let's look at Hebrews uh, chapter 3 and verse 1. You're making a demand on His name. Amen. He's not going to let His name be, be you know, uh, demeaned. Or lessened, amen. So wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. All right, now, now look at, okay, let me read this one more time. Though. Wherefore, holy brethren, that'd be us, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession or our confession, Christ Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now look at John chapter 14 and verse 12. See, a lot of people think that that, you know, confessing the word, well, that's just some movement. That's just what somebody... No, this, it's, it's, it's in alignment with what the Word of God, what the prophets did, what the apostles did, what Jesus did. He said, I only say what, I, what my Father says. Amen? So it's not some new or, you know, some religious movement. It may be, but that's not the point. The point is this is in agreement with what God does. This is how God operates. Amen? So, very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. All right, go back to Hebrews 3 and 1, Mike. So, instead of focusing on the size of the mountains, and we've all talked about this before, instead of focusing on the issues and the problems in our life, we should focus on Almighty God. How many times have we heard Tim when he's testified about these very things? That's exactly what he's saying. It, it resonates with me when I hear that. Yeah. Instead of looking at the issue and let that overwhelm you, look at your God. Look at how much God has done. Yeah. Remember what he's, how, how He's delivered you in the past. Remember what He's done. And He'll do it again. He wants to continuously be that God to you. Praise the Lord. So, we, we got to focus on Almighty God, the God who promised that what we say in agreement with Him will be done. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So look again here. Hebrews 3 and 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now, if you notice, first of all, the word apostle is a Greek word that refers to somebody who's been sent to do something. Amen. Go. Something to do. He, he's been sent to do something. And here we see it in the Bible. It's capitalized. Apostle, high priest, are capitalized. 
right? And that's because they are sent, or he, he is sent, he's talking about somebody that is sent from God. Amen. And that's why it's capitalized, to get our attention, amen? Now, Jesus was sent, he was anointed by God. For what? To be our high priest, amen? And the word priest, if just a, a natural definition of that is it means somebody who is an administrator, somebody that officiates and performs certain duties, mm -hmm. somebody who causes certain things to come to pass in the area that he's been called to. Yep. Amen. So Jesus administrates our profession. He administrates our confession of faith. Amen. It's not just, it's not, these are not just words that we're speaking. We speak him in Jesus immediately, the apostle, amen, and a high priest of our confession, of our profession, immediately he comes to administrate what it is we're confessing. That's what he does. Praise the Lord. All right, look at John now. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Word, uh, verse 14. The Word became flesh, right? That word became flesh, dwelt among us, we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So God's word and faith that, that he released in words became Jesus. In the beginning was the word. God released those words in faith and that became Christ. That's what we just read. Amen. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. That word became flesh because God spoke that word in faith. Amen. The kingdom and everything in heaven and everything in earth was turned over to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus, as Lord of that kingdom, has turned it over to us. Has he not? Amen. He's given us dominion. He's given us authority. And that's what he's talking about in John 14, 12. If you can go back there again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than he shall he do, because I go to my Father. You see the connection. You see what he's saying. Praise the Lord. So, he's saying, you can operate just like me. Believe God's word and speak to your mouth. Speak to your situation. He's with us. He's in us. Yeah. Amen. And that's why he said what he said. That's why he said it in Mark chapter 11. Verse 22 and 23. Have faith in God. Whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. We're not alone. Amen. We aren't standing by ourselves trying to move mountains. We're not by ourselves trying to convince the devil that he has to do what we say. He knows who we are. Amen. He knows who's with us. He knows who's in us. And he's scared of both. He's scared. If you know, if you realize, he's scared that you'll understand and you'll begin to speak because words have power. It brought this whole thing into existence. It brought Jesus in, uh, into this realm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knows that and that's what he's telling us. If we'll do what he did, we'll get the same kind of results. Come on. He's going to see to it. God said he walks over his word to perform it. Amen? So he's saying the same thing when he says, "What I, 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 if you'll say what I say, I'm the administrator of your confession. I'm, I'm obligated by my own word to see to it that that word comes to pass. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter what we're facing. When we know who we are in Christ and that God and all of heaven back us up and God's word, your high priest is backing you up and all he's asking you to do is believe. Come on. Praise the Lord. Say what he says about the obstacles. Say what he says about the hindrances, about the mountains. Say it in faith. 
And they not only hear your voice, they hear the roar, the voice of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, and they have to move. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, I was thinking of an old song. Some of you might remember this, but here's what, here's what I see ourselves. And I'm not trying to be cute here. I'm just saying sometimes, you know, you can find God speaking in all sorts of things. But remember the old song? In the jungle, the quiet jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Yeah. The lion in us is asleep. And we need to, a weem a wick, a weem a wick. We need to wake him up. Uh -huh. We need to be roaring yes. with authority like the lion of the tribe of Judah. We've been given that kind of authority. Amen. And we wake him up. Come on. In us. And that'll, you know, when the lion's roaring, ain't nothing moving. Everybody's looking for cover. Praise the Lord. That everybody knows they become prey. And we're talking about demonic spirits. We're talking about influences of the enemy that try to bring uh, chaos and confusion and, and lack into our lives. When that lion roars, they back off. Uh, the devil goes around like a lion. He wants to pretend. Has he always wanted to be God? That's what he's done. That's what got him in trouble in the first place. And he still goes around like a lion, roaring, trying to spook people. But when we give the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah, it shows him to be the phony that he is, the fake that he is, the liar that he is. And he has to succumb. He has to kneel. Amen. And whatever that thing is that he's putting against you has to yield to the roar of that lion. Hallelujah. We just need to wake him up in us. And we do that by using the word of God with authority and faith and he will administrate that confession. He will bring it to pass. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise amen. The Lord. Give him a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I told you I'd be brief. Praise the Lord. Wow. <laughs> I appreciate your patience tonight. God bless all of you. And again, one more time, let me just say, be blessed. Have a great, great Thanksgiving. And may God bless you richly and be in the midst of your gatherings. Amen. And that you would feel and sense his presence and everything that goes on. And give him the thanks for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go in his might. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great holiday. Hope to see you back here Sunday. Praise God. How I normally talk. This is how I talk. Jamie says I'm eating noisy. This is how I normally talk. I project. I was. I was. Use the George Church voice. Well, yes, you were. I heard it. Yeah, 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 yeah